Uh, Tim, please come on up. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. It's really uh, exciting to be here. I haven't talked about the Invictus game since it finished, and, and I talked about it non-stop for four years, so I'm probably a bit rusty. Um, but it's a real privilege to be here. H hands up if you saw some of the games on TV when it was on. Great. And did anyone manage to get out and see any of the sports? A few people. Brilliant. Um, so look, my involvement um, in the games was went back to 2014 when it was on in London and uh, a colleague of, of mine at the time in the agency I was part of uh, sent me a piece of content and said, hey Tim, I think you quite like this. Uh, and she was right. Um, and talking about driving emotions to elicit actions earlier, you know, it, it, it drove me to pick up the phone that day to the Invictus Games Foundation and ask them if they were what they were doing with it. Are they taking it around the world? Um, is there an opportunity to bring it to Australia? And quite frankly, they had no idea. They were still hung over from the closing ceremony. Um, and they sort of said, look, let's keep in touch. Uh, we've got a bit of interest already. Um, we'll get back to you. And I was lucky enough to then be wrapped into a bunch of conversations and met two people from Deloitte who are brilliant. Uh, and as the Invictus Games Foundation decided that it was more than just a one-off event, uh, we wrote a little bid, a little business plan, and, and uh, thankfully then it all took off. So it was a very exciting journey. I then took the role of, of heading up all commercial and, and marketing within the games. Um, so it's been uh, an amazing sort of journey since then. Invictus, um, you may or may not know, but Invictus means unconquered. Uh, the games were uh, started by Prince Harry, effectively, off the back of seeing the Warrior Games in the US. And the Warrior Games is, is very similar to the Invictus Games. It's there to support the recovery and rehabilitation of wounded, injured, and ill servicemen and women. Um, and he came back from the Warrior Games, and it was, this was just after the London Olympics, and spoke to a lot of his mates and said, we should be doing something like this. Uh, he obviously has a career in the service himself. Um, and he charged them to create something. And uh, there was a brainstorm. The word Invictus came up. Uh, Invictus, meaning unconquered, demonstrates the spirit of the unconquerable spirit uh, of the human being. And um, this poem was written in the 18th century by a guy called William Ernest Henley, who was suffering from TB. And really, it's a demonstration of his resilience against uh, this terrible disease. Um, and the last two lines, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul, are the two lines that the Invictus Games effectively adopted. Um, and this unconquerable spirit uh, is, is what you see demonstrated by the competitors uh, of the games. We had around 500 competitors. Uh, and when you hear their stories, uh, whether you've been in the service or not, if you haven't been in the service like me, the stories are uh, quite hard to fathom, in, in all honesty. You know, they lead a, they've led a life that is quite alien to, to mine. Um, but they um, have come through this unbelievable adversity. So a lot of people have lost limbs, uh, so physical disabilities. But I would say probably everyone suffering from a mental illness, PTSD being a major part of that. Um, and they were using sport and being active, the simple act of being active and connected to get their lives back on track. Um, it's such a simple concept, but the Invictus Games is absolutely saving lives. It's a wonderful thing. Um, but it wasn't really just, it, our, our intent was to make sure that we're not just talking about service men and women here or veterans here. We're using these incredibly powerful images to affect the rest of the country and the world to make sure that everyone can realize that everyone has adversity in their lives at some stage. Everyone is on that mental fitness spectrum. Some days you're up here and some days you're not feeling so good and some days some people are diagnosed with a mental illness. But everyone can take inspiration from these brilliant people who are being proactive about their recovery. Now the games is unique because, and this was interesting coming into Australia, uh, as you can tell I'm English from a background. I'm actually also Australian. Australians are pretty competitive. Uh, bunch. Uh, this was not about medal tallies. It was not about beating the English or the US or the Canadians. 
It was winning was about getting to the start line for these competitors. It was about the journey that they had taken, the support network that was around them to get them to the games. And getting them to the games was then about connections. It was about showing their resilience, demonstrating their resilience, acting change in their life. So it was a very powerful, um, very powerful journey for all of them. So just getting here was a major, major achievement. Um, the other great thing about the games is that every competitor could bring two members of their family or friends with them. Uh, and that's pretty unique for a games. You know, it was all about the unit, the support network behind uh, the individuals that were competing. So the games were in London in 2014. Um, after that, there were a number of bids that were put in. Uh, it went to Orlando in 16. It went to Toronto in September in 17. We had it in 18. Uh, in hindsight, I don't think they would have done it every year, but think of it as a fairly young, immature movement, a brand that has grown and evolved incredibly quickly in a very short space of time. From now on, it's going to go every two years. So it's going to go to The Hague in 2020. Uh, we don't know, I don't know anyway, uh, where it's going after that, but there's a runway to 2026. And off the back of our games, there were 17 nations that were keen to host the games in the future. So that's wonderful. So, but the games was really much more than the games. When, when we were writing the bid, we um, realized immediately that we didn't just want to run a sporting event. We were three people driven by purpose who wanted to make sure that there was a legacy, a, a real meaningful legacy left behind after the games. And we also knew that if we were going to be successful commercially running a good games, we needed our, our future stakeholders that we were going to go and speak to, to understand uh, what the impact of the games uh, would be and the core sort of pillars that we were going we to drive forwards. And so this rather boring slide uh, explains that. But the key elements that we wanted after the games to be um, progressed, living and breathing, um, or that we'd been a catalyst to new initiatives were around adaptive sports. So more people playing adaptive sport in Australia um, and using the power of sport for their recovery. It was around mental and physical well-being. Um, there are over 4 million uh, Australians who uh, have or are suffering from, from mental illness. So that's, you know, it's incredibly um, prevalent in our society these days, unfortunately, across all age ranges. Uh, we wanted to educate the nation, young and old, around the sacrifice of service. Uh, the, uh, and, and the um, capabilities of veterans coming out of the service to uh, lead uh, powerful, positive lives in, in the community. And we wanted to support the employment of veterans. So transition from uh, service to civilian life, very hard. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard because it's such an institution, what you've been doing pot potentially in the service for 10, 20, 30 years is, is um, so different from the rest of the world that, that service men and women find it hard to, to discover their transferable skills and settle into a life in, in community. And without um, employment, a lot of things fall apart. You know, if, you, if you're not being paid to do a job that you feel self-worth in, family units fall apart, mental health kicks in, a uh, major issue. So they were the four key pillars um, that we wanted to uh, ensure were being um, driven throughout the whole journey of our games. The journey started then. We opened the doors of our organizing committee in January. Uh, 2017, so we had about 22 months from being a professional little unit to having to run the games, which is incredibly short. We had a whole bunch of things going on uh, in June. Prince Harry came over and launched it with us. We had a lot of come and try sessions. That top right picture was a walk and talk. We got, we were encouraging people to do walk and talks. That is walk, be active, talk, be connected. Really simple, no barrier to doing it. Everyone could be involved, whether you're in Perth, whether you're in another country, or whether you're in Sydney and part of the game. So we were encouraging people to be active and connected. Uh, we had a uh, Sydney to Hobart race, uh, which was amazing. So these were veterans who, you know, were ultimately some who competed in the games in 2018, who some had never sailed before, went on a, a four-week crash course and sailed to Hobart. Amazing sense of achievement um, for these people. We tried to get Prince Harry surfing, failed. Um, we did get them in budgie smugglers a bit later on, but we had all sorts of activities going on. Uh, and this is just, a, I've got a little video here, which is uh, a demonstration of the sort of creative tone of the content that we wanted to drive, which was less about a lot of the previous content we'd seen in the games was 
sort of driving empathetic feelings towards uh, the serving men and women and veterans. It wasn't about empathy. It was actually about trying to get you to feel inspired yourself to get out of bed in the morning, to be active, to connect to your support network and sort of punch the ceiling and go, if they can do it, I can do it too. So content was our, you know, big uh, tool of ours. Obviously, there was a brilliant vision from previous games driving us forwards. But as we got closer to the games, what we wanted to do was get people acting and being our, being our, uh, being our marketing tool in the communities, if you like, all around the world. We had next to no money for marketing. So it was about inspiring people to act on our behalf uh, and spread the message that the games was coming. And, and one of the campaigns that we ran was Fly the Flag. There's a brilliant lady called... Janine Wood in the corner here, who spent uh, months and months getting out there, speaking to people. Community engagement is hard work, uh, and getting thousands and thousands of flags flying uh, across the country and across the world. We, we were on the Harbour Bridge. Uh, this is the Italian team. Yes, that's the Pope. He was flying the flag for us. We had Harry and Meghan. We had flags up at uh, the North Pole. Uh, we had flags in the outback, we had flags everywhere, people posting them, fly the flag, Invictus Games. And it was a really simple way for us to um, help drive the message much further than we could on our own. We had so many great media partners come in and offer support. It, it sort of garnered, it's got a bit of an X factor, the brand. We're very lucky the Invictus Games brand itself is very strong. Uh, and a lot of people wanted to jump on and support. Um, we had uh, medal launches, the um, Royal Australian Mint came on board and, and produced the medals for us, which was great. They produced a, uh, two and a half million two dollar coins that are in circulation that you might get as loose change when you pay for something in the future. They created uh, five dollar uh, commemorative coins. They were doing some wonderful partners who were helping us just drive this uh, through the community. We created Cobba, which was launched by the Wiggles. <laughs> Cobba is you know, an assistance dog, uh, which uh, an assistance dogs uh, are hugely helpful, obviously, for those suffering from mental illnesses. And we had a whole load of assistance dogs at the games for competitors who were just going through a moment and they needed a quiet moment in the corner. Um, so very powerful, good fun, good marketing tool. Nice to meet the Wiggles. We had brilliant people doing all sorts of wacky things. So this guy uh, called Justin, who wanted to uh, donate a percentage of his profits from his business to the Invictus Games that year. Unfortunately, a couple of his uh, big deals that he wanted to get across the line fell through. So he, came, he, he just said, I need to do something. So what he decided to do was strap one leg behind his back uh, and run the city to surf on crutches, <laughs> which he will never do again. Uh, he, he lost a lot of skin on his hands, but there were people doing these kinds of things that were absolutely wonderful. Uh, and it was one of the great things about being involved in, uh, in the games was the incredible goodwill that was felt. And then on the 20th of October, which was our opening ceremony, at about 6.30, that picture was taken. <laughs> Our opening ceremony was outside on the steps of the Opera House. Uh, and the only thing that could cancel it was an electrical storm or uh, a huge downpour. <laughs> uh, and it was a scary moment. And we, you know, so much of our lives had gone into and passion had gone into this thing that there was a real chance it was the opening ceremony was going to be canceled. 
um, but we had this amazing production team. Um, and uh, we had the incredible support of all our stakeholders. So you, you can picture there's a line of three or 4,000 people from the Opera House going around Circular Quay waiting to come in in the rain. That was dignitaries from all around the world, heads of state, a lot of our stakeholders, sponsors, uh, all willing to hang on, hang in there. It was, the, it was kind of embodying that Invictus spirit right at the start to say, solid, we're gonna, we're gonna make this thing happen. The production crew got it going uh, after, um, working with some audio issues that they had because of the rain. Uh, and the week kicked off, and then we had this incredible week of everything you, you know, we could ever have dreamt of. You know, all the, all the support um, on display, all the gratitude and respect from crowds, all that resilience that you see, the most amazing sort of golden moments every hour that gave you goosebumps. And there's a little video here that just, just wraps it up. I think it's, for me, it's the one that does give me goosebumps every time I see it. The Invictus generation is defining what it means to serve. It's your privilege to watch in the stands or with your friends and families around the television. Show the world what Game On Down Under really means. This is Invictus Game Sydney. All of this, all the people, all the kids cheering everyone on. It's amazing. And what these people all can do. It's bringing out a lot. A lot. They can dance for everyone else, no matter if they're a team or not, if they met them or not. Like, that's what you think the spirit is. Well, I don't care if I win a medal or not, as long as I finish the race. I'm proud to be here, and it's a big honor to present my nation. Every minute has been just such a, a life altering experience. probably end on that but some stats um, there are some stats you know they're, they're, they're the stats that probably I'm most proud of is that 105,000 spectators at the top there it's you know it's a lot of it's down to that community engagement that Janine drove but to have full venues to, to recognize these incredible people and to help elevate their message you know was critical to our games um, a whole load of volunteers over a thousand friends and family but I'll tell you the real stats that matter to me and I'll finish here is that I feel like we inspired a nation to respect and embrace those that have served. We've encouraged active and connected lifestyles through sport, and we've educated young and old alike to recognize the valuable con contribution of, of our veterans and, and that that they can make in society. And I'll tell you another thing, we were the second highest rating show on the ABC ever recorded, which means I think we touched the nation and the world. Um, and when you talk legacy, I love the fact that we've got some very tangible uh, outcomes. So through the connection of government, corporate, and not-for-profits coming around this common purpose, we've now got Veteran Sport Australia set up, which is an organization that exists to connect veterans into sporting opportunities uh, around the country. The Office of Sport will be driving a biannual sporting event for vets leading into all future Invictus Games. The Queensland Academy of Sport is now offering grants to future Invictus Games competitors who previously have had to just find their own way. Open Arms uh, is uh, work leading mental health advocates and focusing on 
uh, the defense community. Medibank drove uh, mental health programs during our games alongside Are You OK and Beyond Blue and now working closely with those two. The education project that we built went into schools all around New South Wales and Australia and we brought 10,000 school kids uh, to the games and there is now curriculum that will be going into schools every year, expected for the next seven to 10 years. Uni of New South Wales, one of our partners, launched a veteran scholarship supporting transition and a mentoring program to ease the shift from military to civilian life. Um, and many of our partners, JLR included, have veterans employment initiatives that have been elevated uh, through the games uh, to support that transition. Uh, veterans cars being set up and the games were used to announce Massive investments in the War Memorial, Kookaburra Kids, and many others. So when you talk about purpose, corporate and government working together, I think this is a great case study of what's achievable um, with a bit of authenticity, a bit of relevance. Um, and these are some of our brilliant partners. Jaguar Land Rover um, have been top of the tree since 2014. It wouldn't be here, it wouldn't have been here, the Games, uh, in 2018 in Sydney. It wouldn't have even started in London without Jaguar Land Rover. And so I'll, I'll hand over to Mark to talk you through that journey.